Okay, so let's start out by talking about a thing called charge. A charge can either be positive or it can be negative. Okay, and usually when we're talking about charge, we're talking about electrons. So if we have some sort of nucleus here with protons, these are called protons here, but we will also have things going around the outside All right, and these here are called electrons. So this is an electron. And so we need to measure these electrons. We need to quantify how big they are. And we use the measurement of Coulomb. Coulomb. And a coulomb, we write as just the letter C, the letter C here. And one coulomb, one C, is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons. So this is a lot of electrons, okay? Likewise, we can write uh, one electron, one electron, E, is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th power coulombs, okay? So one coulomb makes up a lot of electrons and one electron has a very small charge, very small, very small. Okay, so that is the coulomb. It's a measure of charge. Now, if we look at how the charge changes, so the charge will change over time. So if we plot here, We have time here. This is time, maybe seconds, hours, minutes. And this is our charge, Q. So we say Q uh, for charge. Q is used for charge. And if we take a look at how our charge varies here, so over time, it starts from zero and it gets bigger and bigger over time. If we look at the slope of this line, the slope, the slope of this line, we call that the letter I, the letter I. And I is equal to current. current. And if we write it in mathematical form, in math form, we would get dq over dt. So what this stands for is the change in charge with respect to time. Okay, the change in charge with respect to time. And that's what we measure as current. In English, the word current means flow. Like if we have water, we say how fast it's moving, we call that the current. 
but it also means current when we're talking about charge, the change in charge over time. So it means both. Okay? So this current, I, it has a unit. So I is equal to Coulomb per second. Coulomb per second. And we call this, we call this an ampere. Whoop, let's spell it right. That's what we call this, and we, we write the letter A to mean amp, all right? This is usually shortened to just the word amp. So we say things like amps instead of ampere. Okay, so that's what we call an amp, and it is a measure of current. How fast is the charge changing? Okay, so that is amp. Now, let's take a look at, so we use the small q, this is small q, the letter q, and we also have uppercase or big Q. This is big Q. We use the big Q to mean that is equal to the total charge. Total, meaning all of it, the whole thing, total charge. So this is different than small Q, and we can write this in mathematical form from t naught or t zero to t and we sum i dt so this is the current and this was with respect to time so this is the total charge so if we look at the plot here if we want to look at this in a graph graphically we would have Q and T. And if we go from T naught to T, we are summing the area underneath this curve. And this curve is then Q. This whole thing is Q underneath here. So that's what this equation means, this equation. Okay, now we have two different types of current. Remember current is I current. We have two types. We have direct current and we label this as DC direct current and that means that the flow of current is in one direction only one direction and then we have alternating current alternating and we write that as AC so we have direct current and alternating current. And alternating current means one, uh, both directions, two directions, back and forth. So a lot of times we think of alternating current, if we plot it graphically, we can have this sort of motion, right? If T is here and we have I, it's alternating, going back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so that is alternating current. So we have two types, direct current and alternating current. So to move an electron, we need a certain amount of force. So we, if we have an electron here and we want to move this, 
we need a certain amount of force. And this force we call voltage. So this is sometimes called an electromotive force. So sometimes this is written as E M F. We have E M F. E M F, which is a voltage. And this is measured in volts. Volts, we use the unit volts, which can just be written as V. Volts. Okay, so to move this electron, we need a certain amount of voltage. And the voltage can be written as a change in work with respect to time. Okay? Where we can think of work, this W standing for work, we can think of that as joules. Joules, it's a measure of energy, a measure of energy. So it's amount of energy, and here we have time. So to move this electron from A to B, if we start from A and we want to move it to B, A to B, A to B, we would need a certain amount of work with respect to time. Okay, so voltage, usually when we talk about a voltage source, we talk about a battery. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the idea of a battery, right? Some sort of So battery. Or like in your cars. You have a battery something like this. Right? With positive, negative. Okay, so this is what we call a voltage source a voltage source and i believe that a battery is about 1.5 volts and a car battery is close to 12 volts and batteries just like batteries or voltage sources we say they can be constant or they can change with time so we use this for constant voltage staying the same the whole time and then we use a small v so this is capital b a v capital v or big v and small v we use for uh, varying with time, changing with time. Constant voltage and varying with time. So for constant voltage, we would just have, this is V time. For small V, we could have Something like this, small v down here, big V constant. And that is a little bit, a little bit about voltage. So let's look at the relationship between charge and current. and voltage. Let's look at the relationship between those three things. So if we have our water here, all right, and let's say we have a boat up here,
Okay. So we said that the current, the current is I. Current. And these are all these electrons being flow, uh, flowing down the water here. All right, so we have the charge here. The charge is here. And the force, remember that the force, this represents the force. So if we wanna take a look at the height here, We say that this is the voltage, the height of this waterfall. The height is the voltage. And so we have these current, uh, this current moving these charges along. So the bigger the voltage, the bigger the voltage, the faster or higher the current, okay? So that is the relationship between charge current, and voltage. Now let's look at the relationship of power and energy. Energy, we usually can write that as work, or a small w, work. And the unit, the unit that we use is joules or capital letter J. And power relates the energy to time. So the power, if we write P for power, the power is equal to the rate of change of the work or the energy with respect to time, okay? Which is going to be something like, if the units are joules, that's joules per second. And joules per second, we also write as a watt. A watt, which is just a capital W. So joules per second is one watt. And also, we can write the power is equal to the voltage times the current. The power equals the voltage times the current. So we have volts here, and current is measured in amps. So the voltage times the amps is equal to the power, and that will be in watts or W, okay? So it is the change in energy with respect to time there. Now, if we want the energy, if we want the energy, W, that is equal to the integration, the integration, from some time to another time, time one to time two, or T naught to T, power DT, okay? Which is also equal to VI times DT. So we're really looking at the energy if we have the power and the time plotted here, and T naught to T, if we take the area underneath this curve, that will be the energy, and that will be measured in joules. Be measured in joules there. When we talk about energy, we usually talk in terms of watt, watt hours, so watt hours. So one watt hour is 3,600, 3,600 or 3,600 
joules. One watt hour is 3,600 joules. Okay. So I have this light bulb here. So there's a light bulb. And the light bulb is 13 watts. The light bulb is 13 watts. So how much money uh, to use the light bulb? So how much money to use this light bulb? Well, where I'm from in Iowa, in Iowa, we pay per kilowatt hour, and it is roughly $0.12 per kilowatt hours. Now that's a little different than a watt hour, right? 1,000 watt hours is equal to one kilowatt hour. Okay. So if I run this for one day, one day, how much does it cost? Well, 13 watts is the power. This is the power. And so 13 watts is 0 0.013 kilowatts. And I multiply that by 24 hours, 24 hours. And that comes out to be, let me get my calculator, 0 0.013 times 24. That is 0.312 kilowatt hours. 0.312 kilowatt hours. So if I take this and multiply it by kilowatt hours times 0.12 kilowatt hours, that's the cost per kilowatt hour, I get 0.312 times 0.12, it looks like about 0 0.0. 037 dollars so that's about three cents very small amount of cost here because this is a good light bulb this is good okay so uh, not much money okay very small now that we've talked about basic electricity, we're now going to talk about different components. And we're going to take these components and put them together to make an entire circuit. So we have passive elements that do not generate electricity. These are things like resistors, inductors, capacitors, and then we have active elements. Active elements are things such as batteries, amplifiers, and generators. Now I'm gonna show you how to draw different types of sources. So for example, if we have a voltage source, This is going to be the structure of a constant voltage source. So this does not change with time. But if we have something like this, and we use a small v, that can change with time.
So for example, if we plot the voltage with respect to time, right, this is going to look like this, and this is going to be constant here. Constant, V, constant. Now these are voltage sources. So we have positive, negative, but we can also have current sources as well. So with current sources, we can have I for constant or small i, big I or small i. So this varies with time, varies with time. So we will tackle both of these voltage sources and current sources.